The scripture for today's message is Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. Therefore, I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Emmanuel Choir and Nishi Orchestra will glorify God with their praise. Brothers and sisters in the uh, branch churches in, Korea, in, in and out of Korea and local sanctuary members and all MAMI members who are attending this service to GCN and Internet, this is the 17th session on Hell, Hell Sermon Series. The night before He took the cross, Jesus said the following in the Last Supper with His disciples. Mark chapter 14, verses 17 and 18 say, When it was evening, he came with the twelve. As they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Who was he talking about? It was Judas Iscariot. Jesus knew in advance that Judas would betray him. But Jesus did not give up on Judas until the end. Jesus did not forsake him, but tried to give him an awakening and a chance to repent. Jesus wouldn't give up on him because he knew what would happen to his soul. Jesus sincerely hoped that Judas would listen to what he said, turn back, and escape the eternal punishment. Of course, Jesus knew everything and he knew that Judas wouldn't turn back to the end. He spoke so earnestly because he knew very well what would happen to Judas. Mark chapter 14 verse 21 says, For the Son of Man is to go just as it is written of Him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. This is so true. Even if you were to suffer only the list of the punishments of hell, it would be better if you were not born than to fall into hell. But to us, who are saved and will go to heaven, our birth itself is a blessing and something to be thankful for. Through this short period of human cultivation, we come to understand the love of God and live in the eternal kingdom of glory without any tears, sorrow, or pain. So, how blessed we are. Brother and sister, think of this way. If you just... Uh, sleep, you, you know nothing. Let's say you have a joyful party tonight. It is just a, such a joyful party. But let's say you fall asleep and miss the whole night. Then what would you say after you, you wake up? Would you say having a good night's sleep was better than attending a party? No, you would have regrets, bitter regrets. You could have spent a joyful time. You would have regret. Rather than sleeping, you would want to have joyful party. The people I'm going to talk about today were once among the blessed as we are, but they left God in the middle, and as a result, their soul were cursed, and they will fall into hell. Just as, Judas, uh, just as Jesus did not let go of Judas Iscariot until the end, God did not let go of them until the end either. God enlightened them through the Holy Spirit and gave them the grace to turn back. But in the end, they rejected the hand of God. Continuing from the last session, I will talk about the punishments that these souls receive, those who go to the lower grave because of their blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. I ask in the name of the Lord that you inscribe this message deeply in your heart so that you will not give God such grief. 
dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the first case is a person who used to be a pastor but became arrogant and began to stand against God. At this church, he was healed of He was healed of infirmities and diseases and experienced various works of the Holy Spirit. Since then, he fasted and prayed fervently in an, in an effort to circumcise his heart. He was very passionate in his duties of visiting the souls and sharing the gospel. As he followed the voice and guidance of the Holy Spirit, he bore fruits. He was praised and loved by many people and finally became a pastor. But as he was acknowledged and praised by others, arrogance began to grow in his heart. He couldn't really look at himself correctly. He considered himself right in all affairs and stopped circumcising his heart. He still had anger, envy, and jealousy in him, but he stopped trying to cast them off. He even judged and condemned those who are righteous. If he didn't like a person, he piled up hard feelings against him. Once a person is consumed by arrogance and his evil begins to be revealed, he lets out greater and greater evil. Finally, he will reach the worst state where he can neither control himself nor listen to anyone's advice. This person also piled up evil upon evil and finally got entrapped by Satan. When a test came, he was deceived and ended up standing against God. Brothers and sisters, the, the Apostle Paul advises us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Our salvation is not complete just because we've received the Holy Spirit. We have to reach complete salvation until we enter heaven. Namely, we have to be on alert with fear and trembling until we are completely sanctified. Some people become pastors or leaders because they experience God's great grace or have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But if they are not completely sanctified yet, it's like a marathoner who hasn't reached the finish line yet. Even though a marathoner runs ahead of others and comes closer to the finish line in the beginning of a race, if he gives up the halfway through, th that's it. Running ahead of others early on is completely meaningless. Just like anyone else who did not participate in the competition, he wouldn't receive a prize. It's the same in our Christian life. If you stop circumcising your heart and your faithfulness cools down, it is difficult to be saved just like those who haven't met God. That's why even the Apostle Paul, who stayed faithful with all his life after meeting the Lord, always tried to be humble. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, But I discipline my body and make it my slave, so that I, after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, he advises us, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. The person I'm going to explain from now on thought he was standing while he actually had a lot of evil in his heart. And he finally fell. Brothers and sisters, we must not be lukewarm in our faith. We have to struggle against this to the point of shedding blood until we completely cast off all sins and evil from our heart. Even if we circumcise our heart, stay faithful, and press on passionately, once we give up the, uh, we, once we give up the halfway through, we get entrapped by Satan. The reason is, the enemy devil and Satan are prowling around like a roaring lion to find someone to devour. That is why Revelation chapter 3 verse 16 warns us, saying, So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Some people lead a lukewarm Christian life. They used to lead a uh, spirit-filled Christian life, and then they began to lead a lukewarm Christian life, and they got diseased or had an accident, and they come to repent. And they repent, saying like, I want to recover first love for God. I want to repent of having led a lukewarm, lukewarm life of faith, having taken a good break from prayer. I want to recover myself spiritually they repent like that 
This soul who falls into the lower grave will receive the torture by a machine in the shape of a messenger of hell. This machine is many times bigger than this messenger of hell. The cold feel of a machine on the top. Uh, the cold feel of a machine on top of gruesomeness of the me- messenger of hell makes the soul feel terrified. The hands of this machine have sharp nails, and they are so long that they are taller than the soul. This machine will grab the neck of the soul, lift him up with his right hand, and hold his hand with his left nails and turn it. At this point, the sharp nails pierce into his head. With the pain of his head being pierced, this soul would jerk his body in an effort to get away from this machine. At the same time, a video screen unfolds right before his eyes. On that screen, the happiest moments of his earthly life are played vividly. The moment he first received God's grace and offered praises of things with a bright face filled with the Holy Spirit, his face filled with happy laughter, and the days when he passionately marched on with a resolve to evangelize the world as a pastor and received great love from God. All these scenes are shown one by one. He thinks, I was a pastor, a servant of the Almighty God. I was filled with the hope of dwelling in the glory of New Jerusalem. But now, I'm receiving this punishment in hell. The distinct contrast between his past and present and the happy memories of the past tear his heart to pieces like a sharp dagger. He will suffer from mental torment as well as physical pain. Not able to bear the pain, he covers up his head with his hands and shakes his body, shakes his bloody and sweaty head with disheveled hair, and screams, asking them to stop. But that doesn't mean his pain will stop. Covering his eyes or ears doesn't make him blind or deaf. After some time, when the torturing machine puts him down on the ground, the messengers of hell that have been looking on gather around him. They giggle and laugh at him, saying, Were you a servant of God? Oh, you were a leader of the church? You served as an an apostle of Satan and ended up becoming prey to Satan. When this soul bitterly whips, hearing such mocking words, the right hand of the machine comes down again. It again grabs his neck with two fingers and picks him up in the air. When he is lifted up, When he is lifted to the height of the neck of the machine, it pierces his head with its sharp nails and again shows him the happy moments of his past. This torture will go on unceasingly until he receives the final judgment and falls into the lake of surfer in hell. The next person I'm going to talk about used to be faithful to God, but stopped circumcising his heart and ends up receiving punishments in the lower grave. He was also a pastor, teaching the church members and having many significant duties. He also tried to carry out his duties diligently, but at some point, he stopped praying and circumcising his heart. Everyone, please remember the moment when you met God first and you had first love for God, when you were filled with the Spirit, when you were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Remember those moments, how happy you were. You were happy praying. You were happy attending various worship services. You were happy attending cell group meetings. You were happy opening your lips and testifying to God. sharing your testimonies, you are very happy coming to church and giving praises to God. But at some point, those hap- this joy began to disappear. From the moment you look back to the world, you thought you've cut off everything, but you got deceived again into loving the world. And then the forces of darkness tries, uh, begins to consume your heart and thoughts, and you lose the fullness. Everyone, there is something that people always take joy in since their birth. Since their birth, they always take joy in it. What is that? It is eating. Whether you are a kid or student or an adult, you are always happy eating. 
except when you lose appetite because you catch a cold or flu, how happy and joyful you are while eating. And how good it would be if you are happy, always happy in being faithful to God. If you have done so, you have already come into the Holy Spirit. I think everyone has been happy while eating. You take just great joy in eating. In fact, he had great greed for fame and money in his heart, but he did not realize that he had such evil in his heart. We have to stay particularly vigilant against the desire to gain fame. Desire to gain fame, greed, covetousness, we have to be strongly and extremely vigilant of all these things. And he stopped circumcising his heart, and sinful natures in his heart grew greater and greater like poisonous mushrooms before he knew it. Meanwhile, when there was a test for the church, he left the church and the members, even as a leader who had to take the lead in protecting the church. Accepting the works of Satan, he committed a great sin of interfering with the church. As he was one of the major leaders of the church, his deeds impacted many people. He ended, up in, he ended up instigating other church workers and members to stand against God and interfere with the church. Because of that, the punishment of his sins became heavier. When he falls into the lower grave in the future, he will be tied to a wooden pole to receive his punishments, which is a little less than hanging on the cross like Judas is carried. He is tied in a way that he cannot even move his hands or feet, and the messenger of hell with, will show him a video showing his happiest moments on this earth when he was a passionate as a servant of the Lord. If he had kept on marching that way, he would enjoy great honor and blessings. But since he did not cast off his greed and falsehood but committed a sin, he lost his precious opportunity. The reason that the video is shown to him is to remind him of his wretched situation of the present so that his, gri- so that his regret about the wrong choices in the past would be the greatest. Namely, they give him mental pain. As each scene of his happy past is played, the messenger of hell says to him, Your greed has borne this kind of fruit. Then a black fruit falls on him from above. On the ceiling of the place where he is tied, things that, things that look like dark pouches or round fruits are hanging. These fruit-like things are the souls who follow this person who is tied to the tree. They join them in standing against God and end up falling into the Lord's grave along with Him. Their arms and legs and torsos are all separated from each other, and only their heads are hanging on the ceiling. When we share the gospel, we bear the fruits of evangelism, the souls which are the souls who will enter heaven with us. Likewise, this soul who is tied to the tree has borne his fruits, which are the souls who fall into hell with them. He pursued his greed, deceived his souls into following him and joining him in doing evil, and led him to hell. As the messenger of hell says, your greed has borne this fruit. It's like giving a signal. As soon as it says that, something like pouch bursts and a head falls from it. And a head falls from it. You know, the Bible says that if a blind man guides another blind man, both will fall into a pit, which means they will both go into hell. Uh, some people come to church, listen to the message, and receive grace. Uh, they confess that way. They confess this. When they first came to the church, they didn't understand the message, the sermon. They heard about the rumors about the signs and wonders, and, and they heard that this church is so good. But as they came, they found the messages so difficult. 
But as they continued to hear, at some point, they began to understand the words. And they finally found the sermons sweeter than the honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Others confessed that the messages were so different from their knowledge. They even worried, they even thought about leaving the church because they found the message so different from their thoughts. But as they stay in this church for a few months and begin to understand the message, they realized that this is absolutely the truth and they repented of judging the words. But you you have to know that. You have to discern things with the Word of God. You can receive the exact answer from the Word of God. Everything we teach here is the Word of God. You can discern things with the Word, but but people try to fit the words into the wrong knowledge they had, so they find the words differ from their knowledge. For example, they heard that praying in tongues is wrong, but in the church, we pray in tongues. But look look, look at the Bible. It talks about praying in tongues. It's a gift from God. They also talk about crying out in prayer. They thought it was wrong. They they learned that even novice only novice believers should cry out, and people with strong faith uh, meditate meditate in prayer. But in the church, they learned that um, they previously learned that in their way. But in the church, everyone, even pastors and even Ms. Bong Nim Lee, cry out in prayer. But study the Bible. Even our Lord cried out in prayer. Even our pastors, even our uh, Even our prophets and apostles cried out in prayer. God told us to cry out in prayer. You have to examine things in in light of the Word of God. But people, some people examine things in light of their wrong knowledge. But fortunately, they didn't leave this church. But so the Holy Spirit worked for them and they began to understand the message well. In historical dramas, we see those who are beheaded after being severely tortured. They sometimes hang those heads on the gates of the city wall. Their hair is disheveled. Their faces are full of blood. Their lips blistered. And some of their eyes open wide with a painful look. Like those heads, the heads that fall on the soul who is tied up to the tree look so miserable. When the heads fall from the ceiling, they don't just roll down and stop. They stick to the soul who is tied up. The first head, the first head bites his leg. Then the next head bites his arm, bites his arm very hard. Whenever another scene is shown on the video screen and the messenger of hell speaks, another head falls down. Later, the heads will stick on his arms, legs, and all over his body. This soul then looks like a tree bearing many fruits. When the heads bite him, something poisonous comes out of their sharp teeth and penetrates into his skin and even bones. The parts that are bitten get hardened and turn bluish black. The poison is so strong that it cannot be compared with any poisonous snake or insect. The heads that bite this soul blame and resent others even though they stood against God out of their evil. They they have resentment against the one who is tied to the tree, thinking that they've come to the Lord's grave because of Him. How deep their resentment would be, and how great the pain of their bodies being torn apart until they only have their head remaining would be. They bite the soul with such unspeakable pain and bitter resentment. That's why extremely strong poison comes out of them. The soul that is tied to the tree knows very well that these souls and he are receiving such terrible punishment because of his greed. But he doesn't regret or repent of it. He rather complains against the good God and with his, with his evil, being overwhelmed by the pain from the punishment. He also curses those heads that bite him. Brothers and sisters, the judgment is 
done according to what is written in the Bible. God doesn't, there's no exceptions. It is just judged according to the Bible. This is absolute truth. You have to keep this in mind. You cannot give an excuse like, because the world is so evil and drenched in sins, I I committed sins. It doesn't work. Just because other people go to hell, can you go to hell? No. Just because other people commit sins, can you commit sins? No. We know. This church knows about, clearly knows about the spiritual realm, heaven and hell. And through many signs and wonders, we know that the Bible is true. We can never live like that. Even though we lived such a good Christian life, if we compare ourselves to people back in 1950s or 1960s, if those people come to this church, I mean, I mean, if we compare ourselves to them, would we, would you be more sanctified than them? I wonder. If you lead a Christian life half-heartedly, you are not sanctified than them. If you compare yourselves to people back in 1950s or 1940s, people who, people 50 years ago, compared to people of today, they lived such a good life. They didn't try to steal. They didn't covet others' possessions. Nowadays, if there's no one around, they just steal from others' possessions. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when the early churches were thriving, there was a married couple whose names were Ananias and Sapphira. One day, Ananias sold his property and took it to the apostles. At first, he said he was going to give everything, but he changed his mind and hid some of it. because signs and wonders and power were manifested through the apostles. So everyone were filled with the Spirit. So they sold their property and share it to help the poor. But after they um, sold their property, they were reluctant to give it. So they hid some of their possessions that they sold. At this time, Peter, who received clear inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said the following in Acts chapter 5, verse 3, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and, and to keep back some of the price of the land? The latter half of the Acts chapter 5, verse 4 says, Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. He said that Satan filled his heart. And, he, and, he, and that he deceived the Spirit and God. Obviously, Ananias um, deceived Peter. He be- deceived uh, deci- Jesus' disciple Peter. But what did the Bible say? He deceived the Holy Spirit and he deceived God. Why? Because he, Peter was a servant who was united with the Holy Spirit and God because the Holy Spirit accompanied him. You have to keep this in mind. Even from the Old Testament, those who stood against Moses, those who stood against uh, Prophet Samuel, what did God say to them? He said that the people didn't uh, uh, stood against the prophets, but God Himself, because those those were the servants who were united by God, because they were accompanied by God, because they deceived the man of God, they actually deceive. So, there are people who deceived. It's, it's like a, deceiving the Holy Spirit and God. Even if you try to deceive me, I'm, I'm not deceived. I just pretend not to know. Would I have to dispute and argue with you? Would I get angry with you? I just left it off. Even if I don't notice, God works for me. So then, I find out through someone that He deceived me. God works that way. And when I hear hear that, I'm so heartbroken. 
Upon hearing this, Ananias fell and gave up his ghost. To cheat the apostles was not just to cheat a man, but to cheat the Holy Spirit, which is a grave sin. That he gave up his ghost means that he was not saved. About three hours later, Ananias' wife, Sapphira, also went before the apostles, and she also faced a miserable death, for she also cheated the Holy Spirit like her husband. Along with her husband, Sapphira was good at lying. She also tried to cheat him, feeling reluctant to give the money. Ananias and Sapphira must have been faithful workers who are working passionately, being full of the Holy Spirit. We can infer that from the fact that they sold their property to serve the church. But the problem is that their fullness of the Spirit gradually cooled down as they lost the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Greed aroused in their hearts. Their hearts became bold enough to commit sins, even to the point of lying to the apostles. The fact that they were cursed and died immediately tells us that they had been accumulating great sins by cheating the Holy Spirit many times. Finally, they reached a state where the Holy Spirit in them was quenched. Brothers and sisters, anybody can work hard and volunteer when he is full of the Holy Spirit. But if you do not circumcise your heart, it is easy for him to have a change of heart and his fullness to cool down. If you start taking the worldly things at some point and accept the temptations of Satan, you may even turn into an evil person who stands against God. Finally, the Holy Spirit is quenched, and you have nothing to do with salvation. Therefore, the most important thing is circumcising your heart. You have to cast off greed, envy, jealousy, etc., and achieve a sincere heart and perfect faith. Otherwise, no matter how passionate you are right now, you can change any time. Thus, you cannot really please God. But as for those who are holy and completely sanctified and those who are making efforts to do be so, their faithfulness is truthful and serves as a beautiful aroma to God. I hope you check your inner heart through this message. Rather than just seeing what kind of position or what kind of duties you have at church, I hope you examine yourselves by asking yourselves, how much does my heart resemble God? I hope you will make up your mind and remove the four skins of your heart stained with filthy sins. In doing so, I pray in the name of the Lord that you are able to boldly run into the Lord's arms, even if the sound of the trumpet signaling the Lord's coming resounds right now. Let's return to this message in our prayer. Amen. So receive the prayer for the sick. If you're sick, lay your hands on your sick part. If you're not sick, lay your hands on your chest and receive the prayer with your heart's desire. Hallelujah. Almighty God, our loving Father, please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints and nerves and tissues and cells with whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit in the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and infirmities, viruses, infirmities, go away. Light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. 
healed him of polio struck arthritis and herniated discs. Back pain, headache, and neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get out, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well, let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accident. Fix their broken bones, restore them from burns, let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no skull left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves and tissues and cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places and their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false and deceitful spirits, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bonds of wickedness. Darkness, go away. Light, come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be vandalized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead, lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fire walls of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God saying, I've met an experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.